Hello, hello. What's this big red thing I've got clutched in my hands? No, it's not that, kiddies. It's the OnePlus Open. OnePlus's first stab at a foldable phone boasts in a pair of super bright AMOLED displays, a slick bit of Hasselblad camera tech, and a clever ass Flexion hinge. Pre orders have started already, and the OnePlus Open will cost you 1,599 British puns, 1,699 US dollars, or 1,799 euros. So it's one of the more affordable, affor it's one of the more affordable fold foldables. It's too early and I'm too hungover for this, frankly. This is my OnePlus Open unboxing and one week review. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do put subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So what do you get in this big red box besides the OnePlus Open? Well, you've actually got yourself a power adapter and it's a big old beefy 67 watt effort. The usual bright red USB cable. Your membership card for the Red Cable Club, which I still swear sounds like some sort of bondage society. Pokey pin. You got some stickers, although none of them feature a bendy phone for some reason. And the customary OnePlus welcome letter. Some words of wisdom from our great mate Pete. I was hoping he would end with get bent, but he's gone for open for everything instead. And while there's no condom case, OnePlus has kindly chucked in a kind of protective bumper cover thing. So this just adds a bit of extra protection to the engine just in case you drop it. Although these front bits feel a bit flimsy. And you're getting bugger all protection on that hinge of course because it needs to freely move. And anyway, I'm not going to have this on while I'm testing out the OnePlus Open because I want to see how durable it is. Okay, so that's everything you'll find inside of the box. So now let's check out the OnePlus Open. Now it's no secret that this mighty foldable was co-created with Oppo. Definitely a smart move as Oppo has experience in the foldable area. So it's similar hardware to the upcoming Oppo Find N3, but very much OnePlusified. For one, you've got that alert slider stuck on the edge. Not going to have a repeat of that particular scandal. And of course, it's running Oxygen OS rather than Color OS, but more on all that in a bit. Let's start with the OnePlus Open's design, and so far, I've got to say, rather liking it. From the front end, it's a regular 20 by 9 display, so it's not as ridiculously skinny as that Galaxy Z Fold. Not quite as squat as the Pixel Fold, it's just a regular smartphone screen. It's a 6.31 inch, surrounded by pleasingly skinny bezels, as you can see there. You've got slightly sharper corners on the left edge, more rounded on the right. And no, the OnePlus Open isn't as deliriously skinny as the Honor Magic V2. It is a bit of a chunkster, truth be told, especially when you factor in that enormous camera bump. But as you can see there, no ugly gap in between the two separate halves, adding on any unnecessary girth. But yeah, 245 grams, you will feel this brick when it is wedged into your pocket. At least that means nobody's going to nick it without you realising. You've got aluminium edging, and then around the back end it is glass. And according to OnePlus, you will be able to grab the Open with a leathery style arse in some regions like North America and India. But here in Blighty, it is glass only. And this right here is the Emerald Dusk model. It's kind of a sultry green. I really like it. And then, of course, the main event here on the back end is that camera. It's not so much a camera bump, more of a camera planet. And that flash, as you can see, there's actually separate from the bump, wedged away in the corner there. And up front, you've got what OnePlus is calling ceramic guard glass, which apparently is drop resistant. I haven't actually dropped this bugger yet, so I can't see if it actually works. And sadly, you don't have full water resistance here like you do on Samsung's Galaxy Z Fold. It's IPX4 splash resistant, so definitely don't go dropping it in the sink or anything. But at least the OnePlus Open doesn't bulk up in the piss and rain. And guarantee I've thoroughly tested that out here in Blighty this past week. So now let's focus on OnePlus's freshly designed Flexion Hinge. And frankly, I was really looking forward to doing this video just because I love seeing Flexion Hinge. It's a water drop style hinge constructed from aerospace metal and titanium alloy. So it's light, but it's tougher than a pissed off Jason Statham. And OnePlus reckons it'll survive a million folds, which I believe is more than any other foldable manufacturer has guaranteed for their bendy blowers. So even if you sit here all day long, just going like this, chances are you'll break before the phone. Now unfolding the OnePlus Open is certainly possible with just a single hand. The hinge isn't too stiff. And the fact that it isn't quite as stiff as some other foldable hinges, really got to stop saying stiff, means you can't quite prop it open at a variety of angles like you can with the likes of the Galaxy Z Fold, for instance. But I've had no issues finding a comfortable angle for, you know, watching a bit of Netflix, YouTube, whatever, hands-free. I found that the weight is nicely balanced between the two halves here on the OnePlus Open as well, despite the fact you've got that massive camera bump. 
Now, when you want to unlock the OnePlus Open, where you've got an edge-mounted fingerprint sensor built into that power button, just tap your digit and you're straight in. Super nippy, super responsive, doesn't even seem to mind if your fingers are a little bit wet. Otherwise, as an alternative, you'd always have a bit of face unlock action. And that front screen, as I mentioned before, is a 6.31 inch AMOLED panel. It's ideal for using all of your apps because it's got that regular 20 by nine aspect ratio, so everything just fits perfectly. So it's nice and easy to type on and everything. And it's also ideal for kicking back with a bit of cinematic content. Pleasingly sharp 2486 by 1116 pixel resolution, giving you 431 pixels per inch. Got full support for HDR 10 plus as well as Dolby Vision streaming. So yeah, gorgeous contrast, nice natural looking colors, nice and punchy and vibrant when it needs to be as well. If you're enjoying some anime, some animation, whatever. And those colors remain impressively poppy no matter how bright or dim this screen gets as well. And speaking of bright, this thing gets bright. It maxes out at 2800 nits. So yeah, even with some serious glare reflecting off that shiny surface, everything remains crystal clear. You can, as usual, tinker with the color temperature and saturation levels. You've got the usual eye comfort modes, video color boost as well, which to be honest, I never really notice any difference. And then of course, screen refresh rate. This is LTPO 3.0 tech so it can hit a high of 120 hertz, nice and creamy smooth when you're flipping through the UI using supported apps. It could also dive all the way down to just one hertz. The only thing I'm not a fan of here on the front screen is there's a slightly raised ridge here on the left hand side. So when you are swiping to go back, that kind of drags on your finger. It doesn't feel great. But yeah, that's about it as far as my complaints go. And when you unfurl the OnePlus Open, you reveal a mighty 7.82 inch internal display. Once again, AMOLED tech. It's another crisp Quad HD Plus panel, 2440 by 2268, giving you 426 pixels per inch. The overall specs are basically the same as that external display. HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision streaming support. Got the same bright poppy colors, no matter the brightness level. And again, the brightness does max out at 2800 nits which is even more important for the internal display because like other foldables, you've got that shiny screen protector slapped on top. But as you can see, even with a good bit of glare, once again, shining off that surface, you can still clearly see what is going on. Unless you're watching something ridiculously murky like the new Loki show, in which case, yeah, you'll be squinting pretty bloody hard. But what about that all important crease action? Well, once again, the OnePlus Open's Flexion hinge is proven pretty f***ing spectacular. There is a crease, it's not non-existent, but you can only really notice it when light is reflecting hard off that surface. Otherwise, it's basically invisible. And you can feel it when you run your finger over the screen, but honestly, it's, it's hard to describe. It's just a teeny wee knobble. It's not really a bump, it's not really a dip. It's there, but it's pretty nondescript. As for the audio side of things, the OnePlus Open sports a trio of speakers. This can produce quite loud, quite immersive spatial style sound. Let's check it out, see what it's like. So Pixel 8, Pixel 8 Pro, 699 quid, 999 quid. Whoa! So is the Pixel 8 Pro worth that extra 300 pound? So yeah, as you can hear, pretty bloody loud. Certainly if you started watching a bit of Mrs. Brown's Boys without any headphones on the train, you will piss off everyone in your carriage in about two seconds. And that's exactly the kind of thing that Mrs. Brown's Boys fans would do as well. And no issues here with the Bluetooth streaming either. All works absolutely perfectly. Now, sadly, it is Android 13 out of the box on the OnePlus Open. Android 14 wasn't quite ready in time for the launch, but the good news is it should be getting Android 14 imminently. And OnePlus is promising four Android OS upgrades, so it should be good till Android 17. Give it a mass there. And you've got five years of security updates. And as you would imagine from OnePlus, you do have Oxygen OS squished on top. Added a bit of extra flavor. It's version 13.2. And this is optimized for foldable devices. One of the first things you'll notice that's different from other OnePlus smartphones is the dock, which pops up when you're using the main display. It's just your regular favorite apps here on the external display. But as soon as you pop it open, this expands. Now, to begin with, over here on the left edge, you've got your apps shortcut, which isn't really strictly necessary because as usual, you've got your apps tray, which you can flick up at any point. More useful is the files shortcut beside it because this gives you fast access to all of your images, documents, etc. Very easy to quickly share these in messages and the like, just drag and drop. Now, if you want to, you can get rid of that apps icon, for instance, because it is kind of pointless. But unfortunately, you can't replace this with another app. The only bit that's customizable is this bit in the middle. These four apps here can be replaced with whatever you want. 
And of course you can create little folders as well if you want to. And then over here on the right hand side are your most recently used apps. You've got a few customization options as well in the taskbar settings. So here we can bring back that old app library. You can also get rid of those recent apps over on the right hand side if you like. And as you can see there, choose whether to show the taskbar at the bottom of the display when you're in apps. You could also hide it away from sight if you want to. I found that taskbar here on the OnePlus Open just as good as the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5. So you can instantly flick between your favorite apps just with a quick tap of the icons down here at the bottom. And of course, just quickly and easily drag and drop apps to do a bit of split screen action. Otherwise, alternatively, you can also enter split screen simply by dragging two fingers down the display like so, and then choosing what you want that second app to be. And split screen multitasking is pleasingly clever here on the OnePlus Open. So for instance, little things like if you split the screen while watching a video, it will split the screen horizontally rather than vertically. So you can keep on watching that video in the top half and then browse the internet or check out your messages or whatever you want in the bottom half. And if you prop up the phone to watch a video, sometimes the media controls will pop up in that bottom half. Sometimes they won't. It's kind of hit and miss. Must be an early bug. And if you do want to change the split screen from horizontal to vertical, you can do so just by poking the divide. That's a feature that was missing in the Honor Magic V2 and it really got on my tits. And you can also quickly and easily swap the sides and save the split screen as an app group, which is particularly handy. This then gets served up as a shortcut which you'll find right here on your desktops. But I haven't even banged on about the cleverest bit yet, because if you tap this wee bar down here on the bottom app, you can expand this app. And as you can see, this actually shunts the top app up off the top of the screen. So this is quite handy if you find that half of the screen isn't quite enough to do what you need to do. That top app, as you can see, is still active and can still listen to the audio in that YouTube video. When I need to, I can shrink it back down again. You could also simply drag that divide up and down like so. Or if you've got apps off the screen, you can pinch with four fingers. And as you can see, this drags everything onto the display. And this is particularly handy if you want to go completely nuts and have three apps on screen at the same time. It really helps to avoid things getting too cluttered. So as you can see, you can quickly and easily dodge between the different apps. And I found this system is surprisingly intuitive considering just how different it is from everything else I've used and setups on other foldable phones like this. So yeah, if you're a serious mobile multitasker, well, the OnePlus Open will just have you spaffing in your shorts. OnePlus will apparently be expanding its dual Windows functionality, which allows you to use the same app in two separate windows. At the moment, as you can see, quite limited. If you haven't any problems running any of your apps on the internal display, you can also change them up so they're no longer full screen. And you can also mercifully choose what happens when you close up the OnePlus Open. I really like the default setting, which allows you to continue whatever you were doing just with a quick swipe up the screen. And bugger all complaints when it comes to the storage, because you get 512 gigs of this stuff, half a terabyte. So I'm not even slightly mad that there's bugger all space in that SIM tray for a micro SD memory card, just two SIM cards. And you probably won't be massively shocked to hear that the OnePlus Open is powered by Qualcomm's mighty Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which is stuffed inside of most flagships in 2023. And it's kind of a shame that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is literally just about to launch in a couple of weeks' time. In fact, less than that by the time this video goes live. But hey, the performance here is super slick, no complaints, especially as you've got 16 gigs of RAM stuffed in here. Certainly making the most of all of that space. And yeah, with Qualcomm's mighty flagship chipset in charge, no surprise that the likes of Genshin Impact and other memory guzzling games play with a perfectly fluid frame rate. It's very unusual to see any kind of judder, any kind of stumble at all. That's certainly helped along by the fact you've got that dedicated Oxygen OS gaming mode, which is as excellent and feature packed as always. You've got a proper performance mode on here. You chuck it on that when you are playing the likes of Genshin, that helps out. Plenty of other features stuffed away in there as well, the usual screenshotting, record. You can tweak the screen sensitivity so it's just your liking. Block notifications, all the usual shenanigans. And to help keep that performance consistently good, OnePlus has stuffed a proper cooling system inside of the OnePlus Open. Uses a bit of thermal conductive graphene action just to get rid of all of that pesky hot air. So even after well over an hour of gaming, while the OnePlus Open was certainly warm to the touch, I didn't notice any kind of throttling of that performance. Now, even though most foldables like this are absolute bricks, they don't necessarily offer up a large capacity battery because of all the complicated design. Thankfully, not the case here on the OnePlus Open. You've got a 4,805 milliampere capacity cell, actually two cells, it's split between the two different halves. 
And I've got to say as well, for a full-sized foldable, the OnePlus Open offers some pretty bloody strong battery life. On days where I've been using the camera quite a lot, really pushing it to its limits, I've found that it has been on the absolute dregs by the time I've finally collapsed face first into bed. But other days where I haven't really used the camera that much, I've mostly just been messaging, listening to podcasts, browsing the web, all that kind of stuff. I find I easily get sort of seven to eight hours of screen on time and quite often finish the day with around 20, 25% battery remaining. And when your OnePlus Open does bite the dust, well, do not despair. You've got that 67 watt SuperVOOC fast charging, so bung a cable in there. You'll be back up to full from 0% in under 50 minutes. Sadly, no wireless charging support here, which is a bit of a miss, though to be fair, with that enormous camera bump, I'm not sure it would work on my wireless charging pad anyway. And hey, speaking of that camera, what an awesome segue. Let's chat about the optics here on the OnePlus Open. All right, camera tech, once again, a collaboration with optics experts Hasselblad. And what you've got here is a 48 meg 24 mm Sony sensor. It's the fresh new LYT808, a sensor specifically designed for foldable phones. Just a bit of a bloody mouthful. And you've also got a 48 meg ultra wide angle shooter and a 64 meg telephoto shooter. And for today's camera demonstration, the lovely Veronica has been replaced by our fuzzy pal. Please give a warm welcome to Kuro the cat. I'm not gonna get pissed off when he jumps up here because he leaves black hair and paw prints all over my lovely white desk. Well, this one time I'll let it slide. Oh, be careful of the plant, mate. So what you're working with here is the familiar OnePlus camera app with the usual Hasselblad tweaks. So you've got the orange shutter button, you've got the Hasselblad filters, radiance, serenity, and emerald. You can quickly flick between all of the different lenses by tapping these little zoom options here. And of course, you've got the usual variety of different modes, including a high res mode, so you can max out the resolution. And again, another Hasselblad edition, the X-Pan mode, which as it turns out is the perfect aspect ratio for capturing a sleeping cat. You can also get a decent sized preview of your pics by tapping there. You can flick through your album while also snapping away. And you've got the usual cover screen preview so your subject can, you know, perfect their pose, check their hair if they've got hair. And of course, this comes in quite handy if you want to take selfies with that rear cam as well, especially using the old palm gesture for activating that shutter. Now, when you're shooting quite vivid subjects, the OnePlus Open did an excellent job of replicating those beautiful colours and spaffing out a picture worthy of framing on a wall. And this past week, where we've actually seen some sunshine here in Blighty, the OnePlus Open has proven itself especially good for HDR situations, capturing Pro XDR pics that still boast surprisingly rich tones with only slight saturation. Even if you're shooting directly into the bloody sun, these results are pretty good bar on the occasional bit of lens flare action. And if you would prefer more surreal or tempered results, you've always got those crazy Hasselblad filters. Portrait snaps are another winner. The edge detection is accurate and you get that pleasing bokeh style action to smear out the background. And even more impressive is the OnePlus Open's ability to apparently capture the soul of a toy, possibly just a slightly terrifying bug. Move indoors into softer light and the OnePlus Open produces warmer shots like most other smartphones. So those tones aren't quite as accurate, but you do still get a fair bit of detail packed into each frame. And at night time with that night mode active, you do get some flaring around light sources, but I appreciated the natural presentation with proper deep inky blacks and very little noise or artifacting. The OnePlus Open's ultra wide angle shooter provides the usual benefits and drawbacks allowing you to cram a lot more into each shot with fairly respectable colour reproduction, but also lots of bulky skewing. And then there's that telephoto snapper, which is one of the best I've tested on a flexible phone. This allows you to zoom in up to 120 times, which is rather ludicrous. And also good bloody luck keeping your hands steady enough for that, even with the helpful stabilisation. But I certainly got some good close-ups from quite a distance when doing some touristy shenanigans, and it is very helpful when you're snapping your kids or pets or whatever. As I say, I shot all those test photos using the auto mode, but if you want it, you do have a dedicated pro mode here as well, which you can use to shoot raw images or raw plus. And then for your home movie shenanigans, you can shoot up to 4K resolution footage at either 30 or 60 frames per second. You can actually shoot Dolby Vision video if you activate the HDR mode, although this maxes out at 4K resolution at 30 FPS, you can't do that with 60 FPS active. And while the OnePlus Open isn't quite up to the standards of a Samsung or an iPhone when it comes to shooting home movies, I was certainly happy enough with the 4K footage coughed up by this bendy blower. 
You've got a similar story with the visuals, you've got quite natural colours, and even in strong contrast you will get workable results, with admittedly occasional flaring and saturation. Stabilisation is good enough so you can wander and record, or enjoy a nice spot of punting on a highly civilised afternoon after quite a few lunchtime pints. The audio capture is crisp and clear in all directions, with annoying stuff like wind noises thankfully dampened down. That's wind as in the actual winds, not from those lunchtime pints. And then if you want to take a regular selfie, you find that using the rear camera is a bit awkward where you do have a selfie cam up here on the front display. There's also a camera on the inside wedged away in this top corner. And yeah, the selfie camera squirreled away on that internal display inside of the OnePlus Open can shoot up to 4K video, but it is definitely best used for the likes of Skyping and zooming and such forth. You can, of course, prop open the OnePlus Open to any angle, pretty much, as long as it's not too extreme. Sit it there while you're doing your bit of work or cooking or whatever and have a bit of a chat with the fam. And that right there, my lovelies, and a tasty wee nutshell is the fresh new OnePlus Open. A formidable foldable with some impressive multitasking abilities. You've got some slick Hasselblad camera tech on there, excellent battery life, great performance. Could possibly be my new favourite foldable. But what do you guys reckon? Are you tempted by the OnePlus Open? It'd be great to hear your thoughts down below. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a ruddy, wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.